everyone, welcome to Miss Wenton's Science Revision. In this video we will learn how to work out the charges of the ions formed by different elements. Okay, so let's start by reminding ourselves what is an ion? Why do ions form? So ions are just atoms that have lost or gained some electrons. They might have lost some electrons, they might have gained some electrons. Either way an ion will be formed. They do this so that they can get a full outer shell of electrons because that makes them more stable. So if we look at our sodium atom here, it's got one electron in its outer shell. It is not stable at this point, so it's going to form an ion to become more stable. It does that by getting rid of one of its electrons. It loses that outer shell electron and it forms this ion. This is a sodium ion. So sodium loses one electron. Now, if we remember that electrons are negative, if you lose something that's negative, overall you'll become more positive. So because this atom has lost a negative electron, it becomes more positive. Because it's lost one electron, it becomes one positive. So it becomes a one plus ion. And then the formula for that ion will be Na plus because it's one plus. So this is what happens when metals form ions. So metallic elements, they tend to lose electrons and they will form positive ions. So they tend to have a few electrons in their outer shell, they'll lose them to form a positive ion. For example, we've got our sodium there again. It's in group one. Elements in group one have one electron in their outer shell. They'll lose that electron and then the outer shell underneath is full and that makes them stable. Because they lose an electron, they form a one plus ion, a one positive ion, because they've lost one negative electron. So we can see our sodium ion on the right, and that would have the formula Na+. Group two elements have two electrons in their outer shell, so you can see magnesium there on the left. Elements in group two have two electrons in their outer shell, and they will lose those two electrons because they've lost two negative electrons. They will become two positive, they'll become two plus ions. So, for example, Mg atoms become Mg2 plus ions. Group 3 elements, like aluminium, have three electrons in their outer shell. And they're going to lose all three of those. And that means that they're going to lose three negative electrons. So they're going to become three positive, three plus. So an Al atom will form an Al3 plus ion. And those formulas on the right hand side are the formulas of the ion and you might get asked to do this in an exam so let's have a look at some practice questions where it's similar to what you would be asked to do in an exam you need to work out the formula the, of the ion that would be formed by each atom so a lithium atom a barium atom a gallium atom and finally a radium atom I will link a periodic table in the description, so if you've not got one, just link to that. Have a go at these, pause the video and unpause when you're ready. Okay, lithium is in group one, so that means it has one electron in its outer shell. It's going to lose that electron, and because it's lost one negative electron, then it's going to become one positive, so it forms a one plus ion. And then it's going to become, because it's an Li atom, that's the symbol, the formula for the ion is going to be Li+. plus. Barium is in group 2, so it's going to have two electrons in its outer shell. And it's going to lose both of them, so it's going to lose two electrons. When it loses two electrons, it will form a 2 plus ion. Because it's lost two negative things, it will become two more positive. So the Ba atom will have the formula of Ba2 plus as an ion. Gallium's in group 3, so it has three electrons in its outer shell. It's going to lose all three of those electrons, and if you lose three negative electrons, you will form a 3 plus ion. So the formula for that ion is going to be Ga3 plus. And finally, radium is in group 2, so it has two electrons in its outer shell, it loses those two electrons, and because it's lost two negative electrons, it forms a 2 plus ion, and the formula for that will be Ra2 plus.
okay, we've thought about metals, but what about non-metals? So let's take chlorine as an example. Chlorine's in group seven, and you can see from the diagram of the atom there, it's got seven electrons in its outer shell, just like all the group seven elements. It wants to have a full outer shell. Is it going to do what metals do and lose some electrons and lose all seven? No. It's much easier for chlorine to just gain one extra one. If it was to just gain one extra one, it would have a full outer shell. It's easier to just gain one electron than to lose seven. So whereas metals lose electrons, non-metals tend to gain electrons. So here is chlorine gaining its extra electron and then it will form its own ion, but this time it's gonna form a negative ion because it's gained an extra electron and electrons are negative. So if you've gained an extra negative, the ion overall will be negative. And because it's only gained one electron, it's going to be a one negative, a one minus ion. So the formula for that ion will be Cl minus. So non-metals, instead of losing electrons and forming positive ions, they gain electrons and form negative ions because they tend to have a few electrons in their outer shell already and it's easier than losing them all. So group seven elements like chlorine there, I've got seven electrons in their outer shell. Now, most of the time, atoms want eight, unless it's the very middle shell. So they're just gonna gain an extra one, and then they'll have a full outer shell of eight. They gain an extra one electron, so they're one more negative, so they form a one minus ion, for example, Cl minus. Group six elements have got six electrons in their outer shell, so you've got sulfur there. Because they've got six, it's easier if they just gain an extra two than to lose six. So they're gonna form two minus ions because they've gained two more negative electrons. The ion formed there would be S2 minus. And then group five, so we've got elements with five electrons in their outer shell. You've got phosphorus there. Again, it's easier to just gain an extra three than it is to lose five. So they'll gain an extra three electrons and they'll form a three minus ion. If you look at the phosphide ion there, the formula for that is going to be P3 minus. So what you'll be asked to do in an exam is state the formula of the ion. So let's have a go at some practice questions now for non-metals forming negative ions. State the formula of the ion formed by a bromine atom, an oxygen atom, a phosphorus atom, and finally a sulfur atom. Pause the video, use the linked periodic table if you need it, and unpause when you had a go. Okay, bromine is in group seven. That means it has seven electrons in its outer shell. And it wants to have eight in its, in its outer shell, so it's going to gain an extra one electron. If it's gained one negative electron, then the ion formed is going to be a one minus ion, one negative. So the formula of a bromide ion is going to be Br minus. Oxygen is in group six, so it's going to have six electrons in its outer shell this time. Instead of gaining one, it's going to gain two to get a full outer shell of eight. So it's gained two negative electrons, it will form a two minus ion, and the formula will be O2 minus. Make sure you're doing your charges, superscript, up in the air, not lower down. Phosphorus is in group five, it has five electrons in its outer shell, so it's going to want to gain another three, and that will give it a full outer shell. If it's gained three electrons, it will form a three minus ion, and the charge is going to be three minus, so it will be P3 minus. And finally, sulfur is in group six again, so it's got six electrons in its outer shell, and it's going to want to gain another two more to get that full outer shell. If it's gained two electrons, it will have a two minus charge, so it forms a two minus ion, and the formula of that is gonna be S two minus. Now the last thing to do is to put it all together and do some mixed practice questions. So in this, you're gonna have some positives and some negatives, and you're gonna to have to work it out using the periodic table. You need to work out what group they're in and then figure out what they're gonna do. So you've got iodine, aluminium, magnesium, nitrogen, and sodium. Pause the video, have a go. Iodine 
iodine's in group 7, so it's got 7 electrons in its outer shell, so it's going to gain 1. If it's gaining 1, it's going to form a 1 minus ion, and the formula is going to be I minus. Now, aluminium is in group 3, so it only has 3 in its outer shell. It could gain 5 or lose 3. Well, it's going to be easier to lose 3. So it's going to form a 3 plus ion. Remember, it's got rid of some negatives. It's going to be more positive. So it will form Al3 plus. Magnesium is in group 2. So it's got 2 electrons in its outer shell. It's easier to just lose those 2 than to gain another 6. So it's getting rid of 2 negatives. It's going to become a 2 plus ion. So it will be Mg2 plus. Nitrogen's in group 5, so it could either lose 5 from its outer shell or gain an extra 3. It's much easier just to gain an extra 3. So it's going to form a 3 minus ion because it's gained 3 extra electrons. And the formula will be N3 minus. And finally, sodium's in group 1. It only has 1 electron in its outer shell, so it just loses that 1 electron. It will form a 1 plus ion which is Na+. Notice that if it's a 1+, plus, we just write plus. We don't actually write 1+. Plus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this video has been helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.